I'm Dr. Eliezer Sternberg. I'm the Chief of Neurology at Milford Regional Medical Center. When a patient is hospitalized for a stroke or stroke-like symptoms, the entire experience can be a blur. There are lots of tests happening, scans, laboratory tests, examinations, lots of people coming in and out. And between all these things going on, it can be really confusing for patients. Often when I'm meeting with patients and their families after they've been hospitalized for a stroke, the most common thing that I hear is that they're confused as to why they had so many tests, what the results were, and why they were being done in the first place. Whether a patient has had a stroke or a TIA, transient ischemic attack, the underlying problem is the same. It's a reduction of blood flow to the brain. Part of the brain is not getting enough blood flow. When a patient is hospitalized for one of these two conditions, the most important thing is to figure out the cause. The doctors are trying to investigate why there was a lack of blood flow to the brain, what to do about it, and how to prevent that from ever happening again. The heart is the source of all blood flow to the body, and in this case, the brain is the recipient. Between the heart and the brain, there are four major arteries. There's the two carotid arteries in the front and the two vertebral arteries in the back. These are the main pathways by which blood travels from the heart up to the brain. When someone has a stroke or a transient ischemic attack, the problem is typically in one of three locations. The first possibility is that the problem is in the heart itself. Maybe the heart isn't pumping blood efficiently. Maybe there's an arrhythmia. Maybe there's actually a blood clot in the heart itself. The second possibility is that one of the major arteries in the neck that travels to the head is blocked or nearly blocked. This can be from plaque buildup in the arteries from things like diabetes or high blood pressure. It can also be from a blood clot that has traveled from somewhere else and has settled in one of the arteries of the neck. And the third possibility is that the problem could be in the brain itself. There could be a blockage in one of the major arteries as it enters the brain before it splits off into its smaller tributaries. Alternatively, you could actually have a blood clot in one of the tiny unnamed arteries deep within the brain. So to summarize, the problem in stroke can be in one of three locations, the heart, the major blood vessels of the head and neck, or the small unnamed arteries inside the brain. We use a number of different tests in the hospital to help distinguish between these possibilities. The first test we do is an MRI of the brain. The MRI looks to find evidence of stroke, not just to determine whether a stroke has occurred, but also to see the pattern of damage in the brain. Different patterns of damage can indicate a different cause. Strokes from the heart, the large vessels, or the small vessels have a different appearance when looked at on MRI. A second test we do is some sort of blood vessel imaging. This can be with a CT angiogram or an MR angiogram. With either test, what we're doing is actually visualizing the arteries from where they start at the heart to where they end in the brain, looking for blockages at any point. The next test we'll do involves looking at the heart itself. We do an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart. The echocardiogram not only looks for blood clots, but also evaluates the different chambers of the heart to see whether they're pumping appropriately and to see whether there are any abnormal holes or openings through which a clot could possibly travel. Another way that we evaluate the heart while you're in the hospital is with telemetry. That's continuous cardiac monitoring. That looks for arrhythmias or abnormal heart rhythms that can happen and be a cause of stroke. Another test we'll do at the hospital is a set of lab tests looking for things that can cause stroke, such as diabetes, high cholesterol, and other risk factors. Using all these tests, neurologists are able to find out what the cause of the stroke was. That's the essential piece. We use that information to decide what the best treatment is. For some people that might be an aspirin, for some people that might be a blood thinner, for some people that actually might mean clot removal surgically, among many other possibilities. In some cases, 
We're actually not able to discover the exact cause of the stroke before you leave the hospital. That kind of stroke is called cryptogenic. In those cases, we'll have a plan for you after you leave the hospital that involves more monitoring of the heart and further testing. The most essential thing to know about your diagnosis is the cause of the stroke. That information will be used to treat you from the moment you enter the hospital on into the future. While you're in the hospital and when you follow up with your doctor, be sure to ask lots of questions. This can be a very confusing time. The more you understand about the cause of your stroke, the more comfortable you'll be with your care and the better you'll understand your treatment process going forward.